Today we're going to discuss the color of your urine and what that means. You can use urine as an indicator to determine what's going on deeper inside your body. First question is, what is urine? Well, urine is filtered blood. Now you have these little tiny magical filters in your kidneys called nephrons. And these nephrons are very intelligent. They recycle a lot of good material, but they also selectively are able to take out the poisons and the bad stuff and push those out of your body. So today we're going to diagnose or dissect this problem based on just color alone. If you're urinating and the urine is completely clear, this means that you're drinking too much water because you're diluting your urine so much, you're losing all these pigments. Now, what's interesting about drinking a lot of water to somehow get hydrated, people that drink too much water, they dilute their sodium and they actually become dehydrated because the key with hydration is the right amount of electrolytes with the right amount of water. If your urine is clear, might not want to drink so much. I always like to recommend drinking when you're thirsty, and especially if you're not working out or sweating. Yeah, too much water could actually be dangerous. All right, so the next color is basically yellow or amber, and that color is really coming from a pigment in your blood. I'm not going to get into the chemistry of how that happens, but when you see your urine being yellow, amber, or straw colored, that means that it's normal. All right, the next color we're going to talk about in your urine is if the color is red or pink. Usually, this means that there's blood involved. Now, there's several reasons why you might have blood in the urine. It could be a kidney stone. It could be that you're menstruating and that contaminated the urine. This could also be some type of an infection, or it could be something more serious. But anytime you have blood, you should get it checked out by your doctor. Some people that run a lot, like joggers, for example, they're doing a lot of pounding on their kidneys. Sometimes that can cause bleeding as well. Okay, now what about if it's like orange or really almost fluorescent type yellow? That usually means that you're taking synthetic vitamins and they're going out through the urine. And especially the B vitamins, it'll give that bright fluorescent color. It can also commonly mean that there's certain medications that you're taking that have certain dyes in them. On a rare occasion, if your urine is orange, it could be something going on with your gallbladder or your liver, but that's not very common. Okay, what about blue-green urine? What's up with that? Well, did you just take something called methylene blue? That'll make your urine blue. Are you taking medication that is turning it blue-green? There's a lot of different foods that have artificial colors that will make your urine different colors. Sometimes an asparagus can make the urine green. If it's dark brown, chances are you're dehydrated. You need to add more fluid. As it goes darker into the browns, that is usually a liver problem. Now, what if your urine is normal color, but it's foamy, like someone put some soap in it? This could mean several things. It could mean that you're consuming too much protein, it can also mean you have chronic kidney disease, and you're usually going to see protein in the urine from that. And it can even occur if you're a diabetic, because usually with diabetes, with all the sugar coming through, it tends to like rust out different parts of your body, especially the kidneys. The number one cause of kidney damage is diabetes. And this is why we see a high correlation between protein in the urine and diabetes, and of course, the foaminess in the urine. But probably the first thing you should do is just start cutting down your protein and just see if that handles it. What about if your urine is just cloudy? It's not transparent. It's opaque. This usually means there's an infection, okay? And the most common urinary tract infection is from the microbe E. coli. So if you have that, you might want to get it checked out to see if you do have urinary tract infection. The other thing you need to know about with an infection is that if you're a diabetic, all that sugar that's in your blood spills off into the urine to feed these pathogens. And just as a side note, if someone is excessively thirsty all the time or, or and they're excessively urinating a lot, that's usually an indication of diabetes, but it can also be an indication that your calcium is too high in your blood. And that's called hypercalcemia. Now, if you have not seen my other video on urine, I put it up right here check it out. I want to teach you very simply how to read these little urine test strips. 
You can buy them online and uh, they will give you some general information on what's going on inside your body just by exposing them to urine. And then these different little parts of it change different colors and you can get different ideas on what's going on. These urine test strips are not meant as a full diagnosis. They're just going to give you clues because there's a lot of other factors, but at least it'll narrow things down to kind of get you looking into a certain direction if there's something that is not normal. But I'm going to make this as simple as possible, okay? Normally these strips have like 10 different things to look at. And uh, let's just kind of go down the list. So the first one is protein. If there's excess protein in the urine, potentially there could be kidney disease or dehydration or you just worked out intensely and that's why because when you exercise that can break down certain proteins that can end up in the uh, urine also it could be a kidney stone okay that's protein then we have leukocytes that would be white blood cells that would be a sign of an infection it could be a uti it could be a kidney stone it could be some type of infection anywhere in the kidney or the bladder or the ureters number three ketones. If you are on a low-carb diet, then ketones will show up. But let's say you're not on a low-carb diet and you have ketones. That would mean you have diabetes. Let's talk about glucose. If glucose shows up in your urine, that means that your blood sugars are over 180 milliliters per deciliter. So that would mean that you're a diabetic. Okay. Number five, nitrites. Okay, there are certain bacteria that are involved with nitrites. So if there's nitrites, then that means that potentially there could be E. coli or gonorrhea or some other bacteria that is breaking down nitrates, okay? Which I don't, I'm not going to get into chemistry, but just realize that certain bacteria will, if they're thriving, increase this right here, okay? So if you have nitrites and leukocytes, that could indicate an infection. All right, what about blood? Well, that could be a UTI, a urinary tract infection. It could be that you had this intense exercise because think about it. What is a kidney? The kidney is a filter. It's like an oil filter. And if you're exercising, you're pushing all this blood through this filter, too much pressure, it could squeeze out some of these red blood cells that are not filtered and that can show up as blood. It could also be a kidney stone. So let's say, for example, um, you have a kidney stone and you go for a jog and there's jagged edges on that stone, and you're jogging up and down, it can tear the inside of the lining of the kidney and create um, blood. All right, what about seven, urobilinogen? What is that? That is the breakdown of bilirubin, okay, which bilirubin is a byproduct of the red blood cells when they're broken down. So if there's urobilinogen, that's more of an indication there's liver damage, it could potentially be cirrhosis, which is scar tissue of the liver. It could be inflammation of the liver. It could be any problem with the liver. Okay, that's urobilinogen. The pH. The pH normally should be slightly acidic. So if it's too acid, that could mean that you have too much uric acid and you're um, on your way to getting a uric acid stone. It could mean that you're consuming too much protein. And if it's too alkaline, that could also mean that your chemistry is off too. But uh, I remember in practice, um, seeing someone's pH being nine, which is like way, way too alkaline. And they were using one of those machines to alkalize the water, which is an unnatural process. So if your pH is too far one way versus the other, there's going to be some issues. Okay, number nine, specific gravity. What is that? That's really just the concentration of particles in your urine. It's how concentrated your urine is. And that could indicate uh, dehydration, okay? And of course, when you look at these values, it's going to give you the normal ranges, low or high. So you can actually get that data right on the little testing strip box when you buy these. All right, number 10, bilirubin. I already mentioned it's the breakdown of red blood cells. But if there's bilirubin in your urine, that could be an early sign of liver damage, okay? But it can also be a blocked bile duct where everything's backing up to the liver and it's spilling off into the blood. So it could be a problem with the gallbladder or the liver. So if there's bilirubin and urobilinogen, think liver. All right, so there you have it, the kind of the summary, the simple version 
of how to read urine strips. I don't have any recommendations of what brand to buy. You can do that research on your own and, and get some strips and check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching.